sensitive, I tend to go to the higher fields as soon as possible. Osteoporosis would respond the best, the most, the more intense field. You would get the most rapid response. And you typically get the most rapid response, the research is showing in Eastern Europe, that you get the most rapid response with the higher strength field. So I would go to 10 for osteoporosis on a regular basis, routine maintenance, I would go to 10. Like uh, three times a day? Uh, um, if you're treating active osteoporosis where you have death scan results or other, other uh, ultrasound results that show osteoporosis, um, and in particular if somebody's had fractures, if they've already had fractures, they already have the dowager's hump, then I would definitely go to a 10. I would probably get over 10 um, at a minimum of uh, 30 minutes twice a day. And then you, I don't know that I would do 30 minutes three times a day, but in the middle of the day, you probably add another uh, 16 minutes. Okay. Now, the problem with trying to do too many sessions and doing too much time is that the body has a critical capacity to heal. Um, you can accelerate the healing and development of bone in the body, but there's a limit to how fast you can accelerate that because the protein, um, the DNA, RNA, the protein development capacity of the body is limited. It has a finite limit about how fast the production plant can can produce to bone. Um, and we, we eventually reach the saturation point, so there's no point adding more magnetic field once you've done that. So I would think that typically, uh, 30 to 32 minutes or 30, four cycles a couple of times a day is probably the most you're going to be able to get out of, uh, out of the bone growth. Thank you. Hello, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, two questions. The research on, uh, this is Sharon Katz, I'm calling from Chicago. Um, the research on osteoporosis, is there somewhere I could get that? Um, you could talk to uh, Karen about this. Uh, there was a presentation made at a meeting about the QRS in uh, Germany this past spring, um, but it was preliminary result, not published yet. Mm -hmm. um, you would have to do a search on the web on uh, bone and, um, and pulse fields. Most of the research is going to relate to devices that are FDA approved for that specific purpose. And your physician prescription for those. Okay, I mean, is the research published in English? The, the research on bone healing for fractures okay. is. But the osteoporosis work from Germany is not yet published. So if I looked at bone fractures and pulsed magnetics? Yes, you'll come up with a number of sites and they may have some research. Very good. Um, I do have a question. I have a six-month-old baby and I've been breastfeeding and uh, I'm, co I'm concerned oh, about I'm using it while I'm breastfeeding. Um, most importantly so because I read that if you were unable to lay on the pad, you could put a glass of water on the pad and then drink the water. Correct. The only time I would have a concern about using the magnetic field while you're breastfeeding is that you don't use it at the very time that you're breastfeeding. Okay. You can certainly use it when you're not actually feeding. Okay. So well, I, guess I would there be no concern at all doing that. I, do, I wouldn't do it while you are actually breastfeeding, while right. you have a baby on you, um, because you don't want to expose a baby to false magnetic fields if you don't really need to. Right. I guess my question is, if I were to put the, if I wasn't breastfeeding um, or have a baby, you, you mentioned that you could put water on the pad and then drink. You can, al you can always do that. Right. But then I guess I wondered if my milk was being exposed to that magnetic energy, would it affect her? It would not. Okay. What you don't want to do, the only thing that the magnetic fields do to the water uh, let, me, let me back up a little bit and explain to everybody else who's listening what we're talking about here. There are uh, a number of studies from uh, China and Russia uh, where people have used the pulse magnetic field and magnetic field, even with static magnets, and exposing uh, water to those fields. What the magnetic fields do, if there's a lot of minerals in the water, uh, it will change some of the characteristics of the water and may in a sense, magnetize the water. In other words, it stimulates the ions that are in the water, which may then 
by themselves stimulate the water molecules. We do know that the clustering properties of water change. Water molecules cluster, and you can have huge grape clusters of 20, 30, 40 water molecules. Or you can have tiny clusters of two or three water molecules. It may make some sense that uh, a three cluster of water molecules will get into a cell much easier than a 22 cluster. Where there's pathology in the body, where there's edema in the body, where there's stagnation of fluid flows in the body, you will tend to get yeah, higher yeah, levels of clustering. And so water does not move in and out of cells readily. So when you drink magnetized water, and even a five or 10 minute exposure of a bottle of water on the QRS while you are laying on it, um, will magnetize, in quote, magnetize the water. And I use that term guardedly because it's physicists will go gaga when I say this, but it doesn't magnetize it in the sense that you magnetize a paper clip with a magnet. Uh, it affects the characteristics of the water, and I call that, let's, let's call that magnetizing the water. Um, all it does is changes the, the characteristics of the water, and then when you drink that water, it supposedly gets in and out of cells easier. You're replacing the fluid losses that you have throughout the day, and when you start to replace them with some of this clustered water, the body benefits works more efficiently. Um, the thing to remember about this is that the water, one, uh, one researcher in, China, in Japan, uh, Dr. Ono, has looked at this uh, using uh, magnetic resonance uh, studies, like the MRI, but, but more technically sophisticated equipment, found that the water retains its uh, physical changes exposed to magnetic fields only for about six or eight hours. So it's really only usable for that day. You have to redo it the next day. So I hope that answers your question about uh, about the water. But I really want to assure you that using the magnetic field between the times that you actually nurse relative contraindication for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. We tell people who are pregnant not to use magnetic fields. So the reason we say that is because we do not have enough proof to say that it's completely safe. We do have research from the MRI environment where women who are pregnant have been working around MRI machines which are much more powerful than the QRS. And there have not really been any problems found there. However, most scientists who work in this field simply say there is just not enough research for anybody to come out with a definitive statement that saying that magnetic fields are safe during pregnancy. We have plenty of case examples of women who have used both, both the static mattresses that are commercially available um, and pulse magnetic fields and had no problems. Um, so I'm not advising you that you could use it, but we're basically telling people that it's probably not harmful, but we can't tell you definitively that it is absolutely safe. And is it, if I were not to be pregnant but trying to get pregnant, is this an, uh, a modality that will sort of help my systems to get pregnant because it's working on all of the acupressure points? Well, it works on the pressure points, but it also just in general rebalances the body. And one of the mm -hmm. things we found is that women whose hormonal systems are out of control or out of whack, out of balance, let's say, is a better way to put it, then if they're out of balance, the the magnetic fields will often bring them back into balance, which is more likely to get you pregnant. Anywhere there is an imbalance in the body, anywhere where there's pathology in the body, let's say endometriosis, which is one of the most common causes of, of infertility. Uh, one study in our book found, and that was, it's not elaborately uh, discussed in the book, but there's a reference to it, found that about 35% of the women who were using pulse magnetic fields with endometriosis uh, 35% got pregnant. That's higher than any of the medical treatments that we have. It's mm -hmm. really higher than in vitro. So for infertility purposes, magnetic fields can be very, very helpful. I think once you know that you are pregnant, um, my, my recommendation, my official recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, is that you stop using the magnetic field. However, let's back up a little bit here too. It's probably safe to use pulse magnetic field away from the abdomen and the pelvis. Okay. So that one could theoretically, without exposing um, the rest of the body, because the magnetic fields don't spill over very much on the side. 
If you wanted to use the pillow for your head or your shoulders or the pillow for a knee mm -hmm. or ankles or feet, 